Kiji was 20 and murdered on January the 5th. He knew what he was doing that was wrong. He still made that choice. And they planned my son's murder. TJ was my brother. He was my brother to you. He was a great person. He could do so many things. TJ liked spending time at the lake, swimming, and being outside. He played the tuba, trombone, guitar, and piano. He loved things like snowmobiling, bow hunting, and scuba diving. He was in Cubs and Scouts. He was trained in welding and auto body. He was just a regular kid. He was a really generous, um, very, very kind-hearted uh, kid, very fun-loving. Um, when I hear, ever I hear the phrase "bulya," I think of TJ because he loved that. He'd play, you know, some video game or whatever, and he yell "bulya," you know, and that to me that's TJ's phrase. Uh, TJ was a really uh, loving son. Um, he was immensely grateful for things. Um, he never left the table without saying thank you for a meal. Uh, if it was breakfast, lunch, or supper, you know, he, he'd get up and he'd say, thanks for supper, mama. And he never left the house, even after a fight. He would never leave the house without saying, love you, kisses, hugs, every time. And sometimes I know he said, love you, kisses, hugs, and I'd say to him, and I'd be so exasperated with him. And I'd say, I love you too, TJ. But that doesn't stop, you know, whatever the problem was. Um, but he always said, love you, mom, kisses, hugs. TJ found a passion for under the sea life and was working to become an underwater specialty welder. He was just finishing his welding diploma at Winnipeg Technical College and after his journeyman training, planned to go to a Vancouver school to become a certified specialist. TJ had all kinds of hopes and dreams for his life. Um, he became a scuba diver and he uh, was also an auto body technician. He got a certificate in auto body from the Winnipeg Technical College. And after that, he elected to go back to school and get his welding certificate. And so he was just a couple of weeks shy of getting that certificate when he was murdered. But while TJ was a wonderful person with great potential, he made some choices in his life that were not the smartest nor the healthiest. TJ also used and dealt drugs. These are choices that TJ made in his life, unsafe choices that affected not only his life, but his family's. We were very aware of TJ's involvement of drugs. We, I don't know if we know exactly when it started, but I would suggest around 15 years old, experimenting and it sort of grew and his attitude changed along with his drug use. Uh, we did not know about, we did not know a lot about drugs. And um, sometimes I go back and I go, you know, why couldn't I have picked that up? But I didn't. Basically, TJ's personal attributes were similar to those that you see on the internet that you look for in some signs of drug use. We struggled with TJ's drug involvement. Uh, for at least the last two years before he died. We knew he was involved. We didn't know how much he was involved, uh, but we knew he was experimenting. When TJ became involved with drugs, he obviously found a new group of friends, and he led a very dual life. He had one life that was drug involved and one life that was not drug involved. We only saw the non-involved drug life. We did not see that other life. And along the road, he became very, very, very good friends with this girl. TJ met a 17-year-old boy who wanted this girl's attention and basically got really upset that she was spending more time with TJ than with him. And he basically phoned up a buddy that he had met in Manitoba Youth Center and said, hey, I want you to kill this guy. And this guy just came over and said, well, I don't think I'm going to kill him, but I know two guys who will and called two more guys. And the five of them sat around a table and they planned my son's murder. TJ was murdered by kids who also used and dealt drugs. He was betrayed by these so-called friends out of jealousy and greed. TJ was murdered because of a love triangle. Obviously there were drugs involved. TJ was involved with drugs. He was dealing, he was using. The four people that were arrested for his murder were all dealing. They were all using. The girl that was involved um, was also dealing and using. TJ did not choose to die. 
his so-called friends made the choice to take his life. But TJ did choose to be involved with drugs. We faced him with the fact that he could not have that lifestyle and, and live at home. He could not have his family and his drug problem. He had to choose. Uh, TJ chose his family. He agreed to, to leave that lifestyle and to be part of our family again. Agreement was that on January the 6th, 2003, which was the first day of school back after our Christmas break, that we would start on this journey together. And he was murdered on January the 5th. Because of their choices, TJ's teenage murderers will be in jail until they're in their 30s or 40s. They're missing the best years of their lives. They all made a choice that day. And it just shows me how incredible, important a choice is that you make. TJ wanted what every kid wants, to have fun, to be successful, to travel to cool places, to be someone. TJ was murdered by people who chose drugs over his life and friendship. Every day people make choices. TJ made a choice. He made a choice to use drugs. He made a choice to sell drugs. He didn't choose to die. He had no idea that those choices would end up with his death. Five people sat around a table and made a choice to murder another human being for absolutely no reason. They made a choice about drugs and that's all they cared about. You can make a choice. Remember TJ's choices. Remember those five people's choices and what they did. You have a choice. You really do.